Hey guys, what's up? Bambi TV. So today we're gonna to be reacting to Jordan Peterson message to Muslims. Guys, please no fight in the conversation, guys. Like he's gonna be telling us his point of view, and I'm just gonna be saying, I wanna say if I believe it's true or not. Please no fight in the comment section, please. Let's get straight into this. Hi all. I have been informed by many sources and also observed online, not least because of my discussions with a variety of Muslim thinkers, supporters, and critics, that I have developed an audience in the Muslim world. I would first like to say that I could not be more pleased or honored that such is the case. It has been so heartening to see that my biblical lectures, for example, attracted a large Muslim audience and that the comments from the Muslim watchers and listeners to my YouTube channel and podcast have been so extraordinarily positive. And all this is lovely to see in the aftermath of the extraordinary Abraham Accords, which have laid out the possibility for peace between all the people of the book in an unprecedented manner. And I have something to say as an extension of all of this. Please forgive my presumption if you would. It is time for those of you in the Muslim world to stop fighting among yourselves, you Shiites and Sunnis, and also time to stop regarding the Christians, and even more specifically, the Jews, as your enemies. Why? Not least because you have the enemy located in the wrong place. First, the best place to find Satan, let's say, is within. If you think the true enemy is in someone else's heart, then you haven't thought nearly long enough about the darkness within, and you have therefore fallen prey to the most subtle temptation of the ancient demonic spirit. So your best bet on the spiritual warfare front is to make of yourself and your Muslim practice something so admirable that the light shining from your well-constituted psyches and productive, generous, and wise actions is so intense that people oh. convert to your faith from sheer admiration. There's a goal. Second, far more unites you with the other people of the book as your own prophet himself, peace be unto him, forthrightly said, then what divides you? You all believe, for example, in a book? You all believe, for example, in God, and believe that you have an ultimate duty to that God. You are all followers of a prophetic tradition, and that is a tradition that unites the wisdom of the past with the vision and voice of those willing to see and speak truly and lovingly in the present. And you are all threatened, in a very real sense, by the system of vengeful, Luciferian ideas that currently confronts all that is transcendent, traditional, and valuable on the sexual front, on the familial front, on the conceptual front, on the psychological and sociological front, and, in the final analysis, on the theological front. So, how about we all quit squabbling over trinkets and details and face the real problem? And I should also point out that it is not the individual carriers of the woke, politically correct, degenerate, neo-Marxist ideas that should be regarded as the enemy, either. First, we must take the idea that the satanic impulse within is the prime enemy with all due seriousness. Second, we must understand that even those quite possessed by the spirit of Cain that attracts and drives confused and lost people to the Luciferian ideologies of the materialist utopians are, in the ideal, fully redeemable and only partially consumed. Even the committed student ideologues who have, for example, attacked me and others like me rather viciously are generally, say, 
or perhaps 80, reasonable and potentially civilized people who could still see the light. Muslims, reach across the sectarian divide. Shiites, find a Sunni pen pal. Communicate with someone on the other side. Sunnis, do the same. And then, maybe, reach out tentatively to a Christian or even, heaven forbid, a Jew. Because perhaps it is time for those who purport to be followers of God to act like it and to be convincing in those actions, even to those whose premature cynicism and skepticism have driven them into the towers of Babel constructed by the avatars of the resentful intellect. Is there someone in the Muslim world willing to build an electronic system to bring people from the Sunni and Shiite community together? A place where people of goodwill could reach electronically across the divide, person to person, and to formulate the kinds of personal, trusting friendships upon which a lasting peace truly might be founded? A place where Jews and Christians willing and eager to open communication with their Muslim brothers might do just that? There's a task for someone looking for a purpose, and it's an open invitation to do just that. If you build it, they will come. If you build it, get in touch with me. You'll figure out how to do it, and I'll publicize it. Thank you, all my Muslim listeners, watchers and readers, for your kind attention and patience. I wish you well as you strive to become the light in the world that your faith truly demands. Let's see if we can unite as people of the book and negotiate our way toward the paradise that we might truly and jointly attain. Guys, I feel like I feel what we're supposed to do is like I know what like the bishops like the bishops and I feel the prophets I don't know what you guys call it as Muslims but I feel like yo okay, let's let me say the prophets like you don't have a meeting and like debate it out like on what truly is so like what are we missing and like, what is the missing puzzle because we all believe in a book and the book is kind of similar but where is the what are the missing puzzle like we sort of put it all together like i don't know i don't know i don't know but i love what he said like jordan peterson is a wise man like i can say that for sure he's very wise guy the way he thinks the way he talks like it's just so amazing guys please to like share subscribe to my channel i'll see you next time guys please